everyone, Cody here, and today I want to talk to you about what I learned using the Jackson Pollock art style. And what I mean by that is what I've learned in using that technique, Jackson Pollock's, you know, drip and splash and action painting, uh, painting techniques, and what I've kind of gathered over the past couple of years of using those that technique to paint paintings. Now, I have a couple here that I want to talk about. But first, I want to talk about a couple of things that I've just learned in doing these types of paintings. The first is that the style is replicable. Okay, so a lot of people, you know, it's so weird because I've never seen an artist more polarized in, 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 in like people's viewpoints than Jackson Pollock. Some people think he is just like, the you know, one of the greatest painters to ever live. Other people just think that the paintings he do are just garbage. And I could see both sides. Now, having painted like him, obviously not exactly, but in having painted in that style, uh, probably a dozen different paintings in that style, I I kind of understand. I, I, I get both sides, and I, and I think they're both true. So I think that he is a great living painter. And what I really learned about it is that it wasn't really about the paintings themselves. People kind of get that mixed up because they see the painting for what it is. They see just the painting and they think, oh, I could do that. Yeah, you could. And I'm going to come back to that, especially with this painting right here. And I'm going to, I'm going to elaborate on that. But let's come back. Yeah, anyone could do these paintings. In fact, I've done these paintings and dozens of other people, at least a dozen other people that I know of that are still living today, use this style or at least started with the style when they got into painting because there's just something about it see it's not about the paintings it's about the painting technique it's about the art form you see the one of the reasons that Pollock became so famous isn't because these are just the greatest masterpieces you've ever seen it's because they were different you see Jackson Pollock and some of the other uh, early abstract artists like Willem de Koenig and Pablo Picasso, you know, they were just doing different things. Like they were doing things that weren't normal. They were breaking the status quo, the social norm. And because of that, that made their paintings famous. In fact, I think it was what Time Magazine, if you watch the Pollock movie, I love the Pollock movie. Uh, they, I think that, um, oh, what's his name? Ed, whatever i feel so bad i can't remember his name right now but anyway the guy that portrayed pollock he did a great job and i think that the movie really captures kind of uh pollock's you know how he felt about the whole thing and how how he kind of worked through it and stuff like that but you know in that movie they talk about how one of the reasons they they got famous is because they were doing something different and i think it was time magazine that was talking about they were actually making fun of pollock and they were making fun of his paintings, and it made him famous. So you can say he was really infamous. But regardless, it was different, right? And so these paintings, these these paintings, these uh, you know paintings that he did, these splash paintings and stuff. Well, one, it was an accident. So you you can't even say really that he meant to do it at first because he actually did it on accident by spilling paint onto a canvas, and then he continued to do it, and it just gained in popularity. So it, it really wasn't about them being great paintings. It was about they were different. They weren't like everything else out there. And he was free to make them as he wanted. So it became more about his technique of him throwing the paint and him dripping it and, and making these colossal paintings while he was just dancing about throwing paint around. Yes, again, anyone could do it. But again, it's not about these paintings. You can't just look at one of his paintings and say, oh, I could do that. Well, yes, you could. Anyone could. In fact, you could do probably any painting that you ever see. It's not about that. It was about it being different. And it was about the action, the style of him making them, of throwing the lines. See, the thing with these paintings is that you can see the direction of the paint. It's not like, it's not like you're looking at something like this where I, I scraped it. You, you, it has one direction. Just, you know, there's only one direction. Hint, hint. Uh, just kidding. But you know, it's not like you know, it's not like this. This is static, 
right? It, it's very vibrant and it feels like there's motion, but there's no motion. But a painting like this, which I'm going to talk about, you see the movement. <laughs> let, me, let me give you an example. This is a painting I did. I wanted to, I'm going to come back to it. But you see every little individual line and you can see the splash from these marks, okay? Because you get to see the movement. So it's not about, it was never about them being great masterpieces because, you know, he put so much time into every little detail. It was that the details were the painting because of the, the technique. It was more about the technique, not the actual piece itself. Okay. So I just wanted to kind of get that away because I see so many people like, oh, I could do that. Yes, anyone could. And I kind of followed in that. So that's what I've learned, that it was never really about the pieces themselves as far as, you know, them being masterpieces because, you know, he made little tiny details. It was because they were different and because you see the work that he put into it, you see the layers, you see the, the movements that it took to create that piece. So there's a lot of there's a lot of movement in there. It's very dynamic. And that's that's what I've learned. I've, now, coming back to the point about um, anyone could do it. Yes, you anyone could do it, just like any other abstract piece. But I especially see that in this because it's very hard to, to someone who doesn't know Pollock's work, it's very hard for someone to to see that work and know that it's Pollock's, right? I can make, they can look at my painting and be like, oh yeah, that's a Pollock, if they didn't really know, right? So yes, I do think it is easy, easily replicable. And to further prove it, this painting right here is one of the, one of my favorite paintings I've ever done. I don't, I don't know why, I just, I just love this painting. It's called Monochromatic Dream and it's black, white, and gray. So I'm just gonna kind of show you some of the detail in it. And I don't think that I filmed this painting, um, but I do talk about it. So the thing with this painting, and I'll, I'll zoom out here. The thing with this painting is that you see everything in this painting. You see these thin lines, you see the movement, the curves, you see the overlap of the layers. There's probably two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least seven layers here of color. So it's, it's just full of movement. You, can, you can't look at this painting and remember what it looks like by looking at it once and then looking away. The Mona Lisa you can see and then that image is burned in your butt. This you can't look at. You cannot take this painting in in one glance. That's what I love about it. But it's replicable. And someone actually made a painting after watching one of my videos, saw this painting as inspiration, and made the made almost an identical painting. Now I'm not mad. I think it's all. I think it's very cool. But looking at the picture of theirs to mine, very close. Now it wasn't obviously line for line, but it was the same colors, about the same size. I think it actually was the same exact size. And the layering was spot on. My point is, is that again, it was. Ne it's not about. It's not about it being. It's not about the fact that anyone could do it. It was the fact that one, he was the first, and two, that this is art. Whether you like the form or not, this is this is art. This is action in motion. If this is motion captured in paint. This is not just a static image that you just stare at one time and then it's in your head. No, this is movement frozen in time, etched in paint. And that's why I believe that the, the art style of, of Jackson Pollock is so important. Now, I want to talk about these paintings as paintings and then I'll wrap this up. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up here. I wanted to show you three paintings and three different styles and things that I learned. If you were ever interested in making your own Pollock painting, or just kind of to learn a little bit of what I've learned in making them. I'm gonna talk about three separate paintings, okay? So you saw that one. That one is literally one of my favorite paintings. It hangs above my desk. I've talked about it multiple times because I love this painting for some reason. 
I'm just drawn to it. But I've, you know, obviously I don't really do the Pollock style anymore. I've just tried and moved on to other things and I have my own kind of techniques now. So it's a great style. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, I think it's a great way to kind of learn abstract and just enjoy the process because you can basically make it however you want. But let's talk about two other ones. So I'm going to show you this one. Um, and actually, I, I, just to reiterate how much people actually love the Pollock style, I've made probably close to 300 paintings by now, and my best-selling ones were Pollock style paintings. The first painting I ever sold that was that size, um, out of the like to somebody I didn't know, was to someone in Singapore. So I, a complete stranger. And they bought a Pollock style painting. It was called Metropolis. And it was actually the very, I think the first real Pollock style painting I actually did. Now, I didn't know anything about layering. I didn't know, you know, how to dilute. I didn't know how much to dilute it or anything. I just made the painting, put it up for sale, and someone bought it. So that was, and that was somebody I didn't know on the other side of the world. Okay. Also, commissions that I've gotten were for the Pollock style. Not for scraped, not for anything else, for the Pollock style. People people love Pollock. And just as much as I see people loving him, I see people hating him. So, again, it's all personal preference, right? But there is something to be said about his work because I think it's important. Now, let's talk about this one right here. This is called Dance at Dusk. Um, it's a dark gray background with black, white, and orange on the um like for the actual painting this one i messed up on and i don't like this painting um i actually made it for our house because these are our colors our walls are dark gray and this coral it's like a coral color um i don't like this painting because all it is is continuous lines there's almost no breaks in the lines it's also kind of flat. I don't know why. This painting to me is just very flat. Um, I don't know. It's just not exciting. It's not It's not anything to me. So uh, what I learned from this one is that I don't... I did all these just solid lines. Um, and I just... I don't know. There's no... There's hardly any splash. There's hardly any... Um, different like breaks up of color it's just lines on top of each other right I don't know this one was not good I think that I didn't wait long enough in the layers but I also did too many lines without kind of doing like a snap you know without like the splashes there's almost no splash um, I don't think I diluted it I think I just painted it um, with the gloss enamel as thick as it comes so yeah uh, so that's what I learned about that one not not a good one at all uh, this one was so this is a just black and white monochrome um, so this one I do like actually uh, this one uh, here's what I learned about this one obviously it's very easy to work with one color so this one was not as difficult to make because it was one color just black so super easy um, this one I kind of focused it in the middle uh, more so the outer edges and I like that I like that the focus kind of brings you to the center more than anywhere else on there um, I like that there's a lot of variation between the lines that there's these big that's a little dusty uh, I like that there's these big spots of color but then there's also the thin lines this one is pretty decent um, you you see the splash marks which I like because it indicates the motion it indicates the uh, kind of the force behind it so uh that is that one uh i think there's something out there i almost knocked off um and then obviously this one that i talked about this one um you can see that it really has pretty much everything it's got little dots because it's got the splash it's got these thin lines it's got these thicker dots um you can see like how there's a flick this is a flick you can tell because it's got this hard, almost like an arrow going. Let me see if I can zoom in. So I don't know if you can see it, but there's like a little, almost like an arrow. So that was a, that was a flick. Um, it's got a little bit of pooling, but not too much. I don't like the pooling, but you know, I, I don't know what I was doing. It's, it's just so wild. This is like two years ago. Um, it's got little pools, which the, the pools are okay. They're okay every now and then. Like I don't mind them. 
I don't like a lot of them, but a little bit of them is okay. Um, but it also, it just, there's so much variation here uh, between thick lines and thin lines and, and the, the action. You can see these, these flicks because they kind of end in like a, a V. Um, so, and, and it, just to feel it, like, it feels like plastic. I, I, that's why I love gloss enamel because it kind of creates this like almost plastic coat um, that just is really fun. <laughs> it's fun. Sometimes I just roll my hands over because it feels nice. Um, but that, that's really it, guys. I, I wanted to make this video because there's so many different uh, opinions on that, and I, I think there always will be. But I just wanted to share some of the stuff that I've learned in making those types of paintings. But, you know, kind of the the actual painting itself, but also just what I learned about Pollock and the style itself. Um, but that's really all I got, guys. So I apologize if this was kind of like a rant or something. I don't even know what this was. I just wanted to share it with you guys. So I hope that you have an awesome rest of your day. And I will catch you guys in another video. Take care.